Okay, so a little bit of introduction about myself. Uh, my name is uh, Siddharth. I am currently leading uh, the data plane team, the Pino data plane team at LinkedIn, focusing on areas related to query engine, uh, storage, and uh, the cluster management. Uh, with respect to my open source uh, journey, uh, I am I started contributing to two projects, Apache, Pino, and Arrow. Arrow being the first one, I think, in 2016. And I'm currently uh, the PMC in both these projects. Uh, prior to my journey at LinkedIn, uh, I worked at Dremio, uh, which is a startup in the OLAP space. So uh, contributed to the distributed OLAP engine team over there. And prior to Dremio, I was at Oracle. That was my first job. That's pretty much where I started learning about databases. And I was in the database kernel team focusing on indexing and transaction processing stuff. Uh, working on the uh, the relational uh, database before jumping into the the OLAP world. All right. Uh, okay. So let's talk a little bit about what an open source uh, journey looks like. And uh, this is the terms that I've used are primarily maybe from Apache Open Source Foundation's perspective, but uh, they are generally applicable. Let's say they should be applicable to let's say Linux Foundation or other foundations that are uh, the other bodies that are housing open source projects. So uh, in your journey in open source, you basically start off as a contributor. Uh, and I'll talk about what a contributor is, what a contribution is. I'll talk about that in the future slides. You start off as a contributor, then based on your contributions, uh, there is a body of a people of certain people in the project who we typically called as PMCs. Right, uh, they assess your contributions after a certain period of time. Okay, uh, consistency of those contributions, impact of those contributions, right? Like the way you engage with the community and things like that. And I also talk about, I'll go into the details in the future slides. So if, when that evaluation happens and as that evaluation vote passes, you become a committer. Uh, so committer basically enables you to, it gives you right permissions, right? So essentially, if somebody has uh, authored a PR, uh, then you your approval on that PR will count. It will allow you to merge that PR for that particular contributor or, other, or any other person's PR, right? It's basically a recognition of your contributions uh, to that project. It's a way of recognizing them. Uh, then after Beyond Committer, you sort of continue repeating the same stuff, plus you do more that I'll talk about in upcoming slides. And then you become a member of this group called as PMC, which stands for uh, Project Management Committee. Uh, and as PMCs, uh, you essentially have to do more of what you did to become a committer. Uh, you broaden your scope, uh, influence, and uh, you also participate in the release process as per the Apache way of doing things. In the Apache way of doing things, the project release candidates and release votes uh, PMCs are able to cast binding votes on the release candidates and all other non-PMCs, including committers, have non-binding votes on the release process. So that that's one stark difference between a committer and PMC, but otherwise pretty much uh, it remains uh, the same, right, in duties and things like that. And then um, from the PMC body, which like I think, uh, uh, so every project has far more number of contributors compared to the committers, compared to PMCs. And then from the PMCs, they elect a PMC chair, which is also in Apache terminology called as the vice president of that particular Apache project. And I think different projects follow different terminology. Um, many projects elect it on a yearly basis. They rotate the PMC chair. Some projects uh, go with a PMC chair, a particular person for a longer period of time. So that's a typical journey. Uh, the highlight of this is that this is merit-based. Uh, so like I said, that your contributions will be evaluated by the PMC body, like their impact, their complexity, scope, and things like that. Uh, like to assess what value you've added to the project, and that's how you'll become a committer. And then once you're a committer, uh, similarly, the evaluation will continue. Uh, and then that's how you'll be assessed to become a PMC. Uh, the general process is, uh, at least in Apache, is that Whenever a vote happens for 
to make a contributor a committer or a committer to a pmc then at least three pmcs must cast their vote to approve the committership okay so moving on this is my take on the open that was the typical open source journey right uh, the, the the sop this is my slight take on that which with a minor modification right so you see between the contributor and committer what i have injected is impactful contributor and then you have a committer right uh, and same merit based pmcs cast a majority vote to get you the committership uh, but then there are certain other things so when you start off as a contributor right you focus on some areas which i will talk about how you can actually get started and leave your mark but the goal is pretty much very straightforward and simple the goal is for the contributor to add value to the project and that value can be added in various dimensions right and value to the project and also make consistent contributions over a period of time sustained contributions over a period of time and that's how you gradually inject yourself into the project you become familiar with the project you develop some sense of ownership and expertise on some sub components and then committership and pmc are just going to be by products of that right like so then it is it becomes a question of when not if right but then but the journey to becoming becoming an impactful contributor is very important and that is what takes time and persistence and patience right so the key thing to remember is that okay that don't shoot for committership right shoot for becoming a a valuable contributor to the project right and okay cool uh, so let's uh, continue so figure out like why do you want to contribute uh, i think uh, for any open source project like it's not apache pino you know, it's any open source project that you think you are interested in first you need to figure out why you want to uh, contribute because i think that is going to play a very huge role in your journey into that project uh, that motivation and drive uh, of why why am i even spending time on this open source project because a uh, pretty much vast majority of open source projects are not uh, it's it's voluntary at the end of the day right uh, people may have their day job and the open source contributions uh, projects are not paying them right off late there have been avenues where i think people uh, did a small spin off from the open source project and they are also then encouraging they pay some compensation things like that but the norm is that it's voluntary contribution at the end of the day so it's up it's upon you as a contributor to figure out why do you even want to contribute right like why does it matter to you and my main commandment over there is that do not start by making committership award as the reason to contribute i think it's a good aspiration to have it's a perfectly reasonable aspiration to have but if that is the what is the motivating factor then in my personal experience uh, what i have observed is that it you have a higher likelihood of this sort of dying down over a, over a period of time because in different projects these things can take time right because or the things may not have matured as much right so your prs are taking time they're having lots of discussions and things like that you may not it will take time for you to find or identify meaningful contributions right so if you are if you always have this goal at the end of your mind okay let me just quickly get to this committership uh it's it will not actually be a very rewarding and productive journey in my honest opinion right so to some extent uh, you need to be passionate about the area and and the open source in general by area i mean the domain that that particular project is focusing on so orthogonal to open source aspect of the project you need to be passionate about uh, the uh, the domain that the project is dealing with like in case of apache you know it's dealing with databases olap high speed low latency analytics right distributed system kind of problems and things like that so i'm not saying you need to be a domain expert or you have you need to have some percentage of knowledge in that domain it's perfectly fine to not know much about that domain right but uh, there has to be some interest about learning something new about that uh, domain because that is what is going to fuel your drive to sort of consistently contribute right uh, the next is uh, the other motivation could be that uh, you have worked somewhere else you have built some expertise maybe in an area that has some remote connection to what the project domains dealing with right and so you want to lend your expertise to help that project grow 
right help build that community right you are you are passionate about building diverse people from different uh, backgrounds time zones and all coming together and uh, contribute making significant contributions to a project and you are you, you are passionate about that and you want to basically become a key part of the project's journey so you are also looking beyond code contributions or like very discrete contributions you are you want to become a member of the project's journey so that could be another reason why you want to contribute and very simple reason could be that yeah like i said earlier you want to learn something new in a field that you are familiar with and grow your knowledge right or an unfamiliar field is where you are trying to pivot and sort of dive in and learn something new okay so that's uh, so i just want to emphasize that uh, your as an individual you need to have you need to be clear on why i want to spend time on open source projects uh, because voluntary it's voluntary contribution and so it's very important to have that fleshed out in your head okay so few basic qualities that uh, that i think pretty much every project looks for in an in a contributor in an existing contributor and also someone who uh, wants to become a, a contributor or wants to become a key contributor one is that you need to enjoy working with diverse group of individuals because uh, over a period of time if the project is doing well it will have people from so many different uh, technical backgrounds uh, and other kind of backgrounds and and so th there will be a lot of diversity so you need to be able to enjoy working with such diverse group as opposed to uh, uh, finding productivity always in a small set of setting where you are working with a related set of individuals right uh, so that's one thing another thing is you need to be receptive to feedback and in some cases very strong opinions there are people there are open source projects for like that have been running for successful ones running for decades like postgres right it's natural that some people over there may have some strong opinions or even in you know people may have strong opinions because they may have been part of the project from day one right so and so when you put out a pr or a design doc or any kind of a wish to change something in the project you may have get a strong opinion so you need to look at that very objectively right and just see the feedback and i'm not saying accept the feedback on face value but have that perseverance to engage in a discussion right you need to stick to your ground right uh, and what you think is the right thing to do but at the same time engage in a healthy discussion towards a common goal right so that's what i'm saying that uh, the intention should be that okay engage in healthy polite discussions to patiently resolve conflicts on prs design docs etc it can take time and in the in historically it has taken time for the most complex things uh, because there were multiple stakeholders who wanted to raise their opinion or wanted to be aware of what is going on before something gets merged right so these things do matter and but at the end of the day there has to be a strong desire to add value to the project uh, because that is what is will uh, what will sort of enable you to maneuver your way through all of this in a in a healthy manner right and that that that's the quality that helps build a thriving open source communities the other point that i want to say is that you and this is from my again personal experience a lot of the things that i'm saying here are also general that you will find in other talks or other open source projects guidelines and all but some are also based on what my experience has taught me and so one of the things that i want to say is that attach yourself to the project but not to a particular contribution what i mean by that is that uh goes to back to my previous point that there has to be desire to add value to the project so now let's say you have you went through some open source issue you said that okay i think i can i can actually implement this build a new feature you wrote a ton of code blah 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 and you put a pr out there right the journey of a pr can go in different directions initially you may have had an alignment with some contributor or an existing committer that this is a valid thing to do but someone else may not have had looked at that pr or an issue when that discussion decision was being made so now someone's someone else's eyes land on that pr and now you are in a situation where uh, a large group of people thinks that okay that this particular pr is not the right direction for the project uh, or is not the right direction for the project at this point 
right so you may be asked or you may be suggested to park this pr because it needs a ton of more discussion and consensus building or it is just not the right thing to do so at that particular point and especially if you are a contributor at that point you're not a committer it's easy to just lose patience and hope and just check out of the project uh, because uh, you may be shooting your goal is to get your leave your mark that okay somehow i want to merge this awesome written code into this uh, project's code base and get my name on the contributor's leaderboard, right? But if that is what is going to drive you, then sir, these kind of situations uh, it can be a little tough to handle, right? So but the, uh, the correct way to do this is that, okay, sure, I have put out something. There is no consensus in that. This will take time. So what? I want to, I care about Pino. I care about Apache Pino. I will move on to other things for Pino. Some, I'll pick up some other issues, some other design, something else. So that way, that will allow you to come, like sort of consistently make the contributions rather than having these discrete events uh, where a, a PR didn't go well or, or the discussion didn't go well sort of discourage you, right? So attach yourself to the project, but not to a particular contribution. Because I've seen cases where someone's PR just took a really extraordinary amount of time to merge or that PR was not allowed to be merged because it was not the right thing to do. And that the person sort of made it, it just became their life that, okay, that everything else is like, okay, I'm not going to pick up something else. I'm not going to move to a different feature. I'm not going to start thinking about a different feature, different enhancement until and unless I get this much. So that I, I would like to suggest to not go down that path and just keep the projects, uh, uh, benefits and goals in your mind. Okay. Cool. So now let's talk about contributions. Uh, let me see how I'm doing on the time. It's 11.25. Okay. So there are different kinds of contributions. Main one being, and the most, uh, the one that is the most in interesting to everyone is the source code. Uh, so in terms of source code, there could be multiple kinds of contributions, starting with building a new feature. You may be enhancing functionality of an existing feature, uh, or let's say bug fixes, uh, performance optimizations of an existing feature, uh, hot fixes, uh, which is again, uh, like some, which is also very like circumstantial or situational, where, where a company who's deploying that open source project, uh, so is seeing a build failure because they're not deploying on a, on a daily basis or things like that, or they are seeing a regression, right? So then they are trying to do a hot fix or it's again, falls into the bug fix territory or a performance optimization territory. But then, but for the sake of, calling it out, I want to call out that there could be things like this also. Then I, you may not be enhancing a feature or adding a new feature. You might just simply be in, improving the code coverage, adding new unit or integration tests, right? Or enhancing test suite. You might think about that, okay, um, this project is on GitHub every time a PR tests are run, there are, we are only running unit test integration tests. I'm going to add another step where by building a new performance test suite or a regression test suite. Right, spin up a bunch of machines, throw a lot of data over there, and run a, a whole bunch of tests. So that's another kind of a contribution. Uh, continuing on the contributions, uh, right, on the source code side, you may want to think about fixing flaky tests, uh, the tests that fail, fail sporadically or intermittently, or are just not doing the right thing. Uh, improve logging. Uh, again, you're not, these are code contributions, you're changing the code, but uh, the point I'm trying to make and the, I'm trying to shed light on the fact that there is more to source code than just building a new feature, right? And that's, I think, where a lot of the new contributors need to realize that there are tons of opportunities of making source code contributions, right? You, you just need to start somewhere and gradually grow your way into the source code and you will just keep on finding more and more and more opportunities, right? So that's why I'm just trying to call out based on my perspective, what are the different dimensions within the source code where you can contribute? Like that's why I'm calling out things like flaky tests, logging, uh, refactoring. So refactoring uh, is a very, uh, it's a common thing that happens in a lot of projects, uh, but two things. You must have a good rationale on why you are refactoring something. Because at the end of the day, you are, you are not adding anything net new into the project. You're not enhancing a feature or anything, right? Uh, you're changing, rearranging some code modules, and it could be really valuable. Like it could remove a lot of tech debt. It could lay a strong foundation for a lot of things that are supposed to happen in the future. So 
Refactoring is always welcome, but just have a good rationale for it and why you want to do it. In other words, don't simply go about changing variable names for the sake of making a contribution because that doesn't fly. That doesn't fly in pretty much any project. Another thing that you can do is in source code or some sort of source code changes that you may help us improve the build time or the build process itself, right? Uh, uh, besides source code, you can also help write good user and developer docs. Uh, you can help improve the existing docs because I think the strive to get to like beautiful documentation and I explicitly use the term beautiful documentation because I think that really helps. Uh, I think we have a lot of detailed docs. Uh, a lot of projects have that. But the documentation, which is super clear, concise, has the right amount of information, right, and, and coverage. I think that's, I think that the drive to get there is still on, right? So you can help do that as well. That is a very valued contribution. And obviously, if you are making a source code contribution in any which way, uh, then also think about complementing that with a, with new docs or changing existing docs for those particular contributions. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, contribution hygiene. Uh, every time, this is just basic, and I think I'll also check the, our open source documentation, and I'll see if, if there is some information over there that does not resonate with this or is not there, then I can go back and edit over there to reflect uh, what I'm suggesting over here, but pretty much it should be there in the Apache Pino open source guidelines. So always create an issue on GitHub with a neat description of the problem and label accordingly. Like I think we have a whole bunch of, we have started religiously following this labeling system. This is a future feature, this is an enhancement, this is a performance enhancement, or this is a feature in this focus area of the project, like multi-stage, uh, right? This is a feature in the storage area of the project and things like that. So do, uh, Pay attention to like to uh, to every little thing that you do, uh, right? Creating an issue with a nice description counts. It does count, right? These things are looked at. Uh, simply creating an issue with a with a one liner or two liner, and then say, okay, I'm gonna, and then just immediately following up with a PR is. I think we do that. People have done that. I have also done that. But we are trying to encourage people to follow some certain process, right? And then when you create a corresponding PR for that, uh, reference the issue number in your PR so that uh, so that bookkeep it helps with bookkeeping, it helps with release management and other things, right? It also helps with people who do not have the time to look at the full code, uh, but at least want to understand, okay, what is the problem that we are trying to fix? And then depending on the complexity, code contributions are preceded by PEP, which we call as Pino Enhancement Proposal. Our Apache Pino user docs have guidelines on what this PEP means and when does one need uh, PEP. Uh, then obviously the most common design doc which talks about the detailed design of what you want to implement or change. And in some cases, this is again very situational dependent. So you need to use your judgment or the person that you're collaborating with. Uh, and I'll talk about like always ask on the issue, right? Okay, hey, I, I'm, I'm interested in this. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this. Uh, should I create a enhancement proposal or should I create a full detailed design doc? I'm also thinking of uh, doing a POC to get my head around it. And we are flexible, right? There is no hard and fast rule. There are just there are just some guidelines, but it's flexible, right? But it should be the right thing to do for that particular moment for that particular problem that you're trying to solve, right? And then clear and concise description in the PR. If you have done some performance testing, throw in some nice charts over there. Tell us about good description about what you are changing. How will it impact existing users? How will it be used by new users? Performance testing results, if any. And then good Java docs, code documentation. And obviously, needless to say, adhere to co projects, coding guidelines and conventions. And also feel free to suggest improvements. All right. So now, uh, that we have talked about some of the, the basics. Let's also talk a little bit about how to start because this is where I had struggled a lot. Uh, and I think a lot of people struggle, uh, right? Especially in a large open source project, which is reached its midpoint in its maturity stage. Um, and again, this is not, uh, uh, this is by no means is the Bible. This is coming primarily from what has helped me and what has helped, uh, how 
if i'm having someone start on oss in my team how i how i would have mentored or guided them and it has helped them so this is primarily coming from that kind of a, an experience right so what i typically suggest people is pick a focus area uh, it also depends like if someone is familiar with databases like in this case i was so it it is it is easy for me to reason about okay the sapachi pino will will be dealing with these these things and because everyone has to deal with at least these many things in a database system right so it was easy for me to reason about some of the focus areas not all because every system at the end of the day is different uh but if you're not, so if you're familiar with the project domain you may be able to easily think about the focus area uh before you even start uh, your open source journey right but if you're not familiar with the project domain you're trying to learn something new and dive into this domain that's also fine because that's how uh, that's why we have these open issues with the right labels and good descriptions over there and things like that are going to uh, help people marry a particular issue or a problem to an area in the project right uh, so few examples uh, i i think somewhere in my private documents i have a list a laundry list of the focus areas uh that that i came up with for the pino project uh, i'll share that uh, outside this meeting uh, or maybe i'll just edit the slides after that but here are some focus areas like query engine query engine is so vast now without within that you can start by okay let me start with how queries are executed so i'm going to focus on run time uh i'm going to look at how the different relational operators are implemented that's where i'll focus that's where i'll try to find gaps that's where i'll try to uh start my contribution journey query writer planner so all of different scopes and t-shirt sizes right then outside and this this by no means is an exhaustive list for query engine because query engine is spread across multiple components broker server and the pino architecture and it's very vast right uh and uh, uh, is upon the project people like the existing contributors or committers or pmcs to help a new contributor uh identify a, a useful focus area and get them started in the uh through the contribution then the real time consumer okay i'm going to fix figure out okay how you know focuses on uh, consumes data in a streaming fashion from real time what does it do how does it manage concurrency over there right how does it manage other things okay how does it commit segments uh or you could start uh, focusing on indexing readers and writers how we read data from our disk data structures and the memory mapped files how we write into them what is the different type support uh what are the different connectors to pull in or like basically run queries uh, in the in a old way of jdbc odbc style and pull the data out of you know then metrics instrumentation which are again very key and a very uh, important part of any code base and that has that in itself is is a beast because uh, we are emitting metrics through like uh, like everywhere in the code and and in some cases that that way of emitting metrics in itself is complex because we have to think about uh, doing that correctly for a multi threaded scenario and things like that then rpc in, in in itself can be considered as a focus area you know think about okay pino is using thrift why is pino not using grpc and things like that right uh stuff like that and start focusing on okay i'm going to help pino uh, optimize their wire protocol uh, migrate to something that is the latest technology that other or the latest industry trend and things like that okay uh so these are, this is this is by no means is an exhaustive list uh, i'll share that separately cool uh continuing on how to start uh the one thing that you need to do is scan through the current open issues uh, i really encourage everyone to do that then look for labels like bug fix enhancement uh, feature i think of late we have started doing a good job at creating issues for everything that you want to do in the project and also labeling them uh, in the correct way i think of late there has been a this positive trend so scanning through current open issues i think will help you will help anyone trying to start their journey in uh, in open source then my personal suggestion is that always start with a bug fix or a small sized feature or an enhancement do not jump immediately into a big feature 
because you at least start something in parallel because that will help you uh familiarize yourself with the the development life cycle of the project right you will have interacted with at least of one or two people to get that bug fix or some small enhancement in uh rather than getting bogged down in the design details and implementation details of a uh, bigger scoped feature that's my personal suggestion and what i found uh to be useful uh okay then other thing you could do is ask around in the slack channel to know more about the current open items or in progress work and how you can offer help uh, feel free to do both once you scan open issues uh, right and you figure out there is something of interest that okay the in an area that you think uh, you want to contribute uh, you have something to offer or you want to learn and then you comment on the issue tagging at least tag the person who created that issue right and uh, i think at the end of the slides i'll also talk about uh, how to just generally get attention to your comments by tagging common uh, by tag tagging the usual suspects or the people who usually look at a lot of the activity so that way if you're let's say you're asking hey can i work on this issue at least someone will look at it in a day or two rather than no one looking at it uh, in a week's time right then make sure to through this communication on your on that issue through uh, tagging the right people and all make sure to align with that person or another con committer contributor that you are going to work on that issue that committer contributor can help assign that issue to you uh, and from there on you align and there on you go okay i have aligned with this person i am picking up this issue and like i said earlier uh, have an open discussion okay do you what do you think like uh, or have you have your own opinion is it okay this needs a design doc what do you think this needs an enhancement proposal uh, i am thinking of a poc what do you think blah 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 so there are no hard and fast rules right feel free to raise your opinion but at the same time uh be open to the other perspectives also right you may be willing to immediately jump into the code but that may not be the right thing to do for that particular issue yeah so as i said try to follow the process right it helps it it helps you in the long run immediate in, in the beginning it may look like uh, as if uh the community is trying to impede your progress but in the long run it really helps you it helps uh, the project yes as i said it's perfectly fine to directly go for a pr for few issue, issues and you can ask this on the github issue and follow the guidelines of design doc and pep all right uh, so now that we have briefly talked about how you can get started by identifying a focus area doing consistent contributions in that focus area and finding issues over there uh, how do we uh, how do we consistently do this and sort of have a chance at becoming uh, a committer right so the key to becoming a committer like i said i think in the fourth slide is that valuable contributions right uh, you need to add value to the project through your code through your design through the documentation that you have added and and there are, there is another key contribution like reviews which i have not talked about i will talk about it at the end of the deck i have kept it separate for the reason so the key to becoming a committer is sustained contributions in a few focus areas and i say few focus areas is because that has helped me that i have been able to leverage that to help other people also become committers but it's perfectly fine you start off with a contribution in query engine the next contribution you move to real time then the third contribution you move to rpc you move to ingestion right and all of those contributions individually might be super impactful right uh, you have may have done a ton of stuff over there and they and you can be a perfect reasonable candidate to be evaluated for committership but the another way to look at it and i would say is a slightly easy way easier way because the, uh, easier way to maneuver towards committership is that stick to maybe two or three focus areas right Uh, and just consistently make contributions in those focus areas and there are a couple of reasons why i advocate that it helps you make contributions of increasing scope and complexity because you start off with a focus area query engine you start off with operators right and gradually you broaden your scope you will learn a little bit more about the code base you will learn a little bit more about what the other happenings over there right you will the next thing you are going to pick up to change in that focus area has a higher chance of having slightly more broader impact scope and even uh, complexity right so 
like I said, it helps develop expertise in that focus area. It helps you become a voice in that area, enables you to meaningfully chime in for other happenings on those areas. And that is also a very key uh, part of your open source journey uh, where you actually become a voice in that project during reviews, roadmap discussions and things like that. Like there is a design discussion happening. You may have contributed to the operators and query engine. Now there's a design discussion happening on uh, how we can actually deal with concurrency in operators. Someone else might be doing that. You may have nothing to do with it, but at least because you've been dealing with that area for a while, now you have something to add to. You may have an opinion. Don't do this, don't do it that way and things like that. You may be, you may be planning to work on a different feature in that area and uh, another concurrent discussion may have some overlap, right? Or some intersecting ideas. So focusing uh, in a couple of areas, I feel just enables better contributions. It helps you to develop that interest, right? It helps you to contribute uh, meaningfully, cons provide constructive feedback on other PRs and designs in that area. And in, in my personal experience, it definitely helps with developing that consistency, uh, which is, I think, needed for committership and in general for having a very satisfying and rewarding experience in open source and also some sense of ownership by ownership in open source nobody owns anything right there is no there is no one that okay every code change for this one must go through this person there especially at least in apache you know we don't have anything like that right it's a very healthy very welcoming community uh, but by ownership what i mean is that you have been let's say you've been working on a focus area for last six months. You have done a bunch of contributions over there. You have at least gotten some idea of the landscape over there. Now, you, there may be a time where you may not be actively contributing in terms of code, but there may be other happenings that are, the other things that are happening in that area, like people are trying to contribute new significant features, designs, change existing things in a drastic manner. And you may have a vested interest because, okay, I have I care about this area because I've been contributing to it for the last six months. And that on, that's the ownership that I'm talking about. That has worked for me. At least uh, there has been a period of time where like after code contributions, I did not do code contributions to Pino and I was just going on reviewing the code. Uh, and that was a very satisfying thing to do because uh, I just leveraged prior knowledge to review the code and all the exist changes to existing code and all a lot of the new code that is being written and through reading that code reading what people are changing that helped build a lot of new knowledge for me and also develop de de help me develop further expertise on the code uh off late i have not been able to review as much code as i like uh because of other commitments i'd like to get back uh but that sense of ownership that you uh, are able to feel after a certain period of time I think that is that is the outcome of your open source journey, right? Because that is what you that in itself is like. Okay, uh, I this is my area of expertise. This is why I have, where I have made significant contributions. You can talk about it in conferences, job interviews, and things like that, right? Uh, so that is what I'm referring to. So once you have so in this previous slide, I basically talked about uh, one way of how you can leave your mark to become a committer as you from contributor, right? How you can graduate to become a committer. Once you become a committer, like I said in the first slide, the next step is PMC. No one is asking you to become a PMC. It's not a mandatory step. Even becoming a committer is not a mandatory step. This is all voluntary. And this is these are all just positive outcomes of sustained good contributions. So now once you have become a committer, so what's next? What do you do? You just continue to do what you were doing as a, uh, sorry, I think what I meant is continue to do what you were doing as a contributor. Just do more of it. Just rinse and repeat. Uh, and now you also have added responsibility because now you can help other people merge their code. So you have to sort of take that responsibility and demonstrate some sense of ownership and accountability over there, right? So show more active participation in reviews, design reviews, uh, develop expertise in other focus areas of the project, expand your scope, contribute to roadmap, propose new features, enhancements, identify gaps, know more about other systems, what is happening in what is happening in the OLAP industry in the world, like what is the uh, what is the what is happening at the intersection of AI and databases, bring those industry trends back to the project. And I think that's the key difference between committers and PMCs uh, in the Apache way of doing things that 
PMCs sort of create the release uh, candidates, right, and all of that. And then everyone is free to verify the release. But the binding votes, uh, the plus one votes, that this release candidate is good to go for the release, those binding votes are only for uh, from PMCs. Similarly, when uh, the evaluation is happening for a committer, someone that we want to make a committer, uh, that happens between PMCs. So PMCs cast the binding votes over there. So that's, I think, is the key difference between a PMC and a committer. By no means, this slide and previous slide says that these things you should only be doing as a committer. Don't do these things until you become a PMC. No, you should be doing code reviews and design reviews even when you haven't become a committer or even uh, or they, they also add value to your committership uh, evaluation, right? And nobody is stopping you from developing expertise in multiple areas even without becoming a PMC, right? Th these are just like prescribed guidelines to simplify things for you. How to reason about your journey in a simple manner because I feel that's a struggle that many people have, right? Because they can just get bogged down. Okay, there, there is committership I need to get to, then I have to get to PMC. And then they are not able to get beyond, think beyond that point because of this whole process and these fancy titles and things like that. So I'm just trying to simplify things on how you can uh, reason about this easily. Uh, my general guideline is that uh, do your best, right? Like uh, have sustained consistent contributions and also help other people through design reviews, code reviews, right? And just have some patience and gradually work your way towards expanding your scope and your expertise in the project and everything else will follow. Right? Cool. Uh, the last but not the least is reviews. I want to emphasize that Code and design reviews are a part of job description. Right? It's needless to say that uh, the most exciting, I think people tend to think that the most exciting thing is okay, adding a whole bunch of new cool code on some cool feature, right? It is important, right? It is a key thing to become a committer. You have had to, you should have built some features, at least one or two good features, uh, right? But I, I just want to emphasize that as you become a committer, you may already be an existing committer or you are close to committership. And are very and are very active contributor. Uh, don't forget that the reviews are also important. They are critical. They are critical to sustaining the project. They are critical for the survival of the project. Otherwise, the review burden falls on very few people, right? So that's why. Uh, and these review contributions are equally needed and valued. And in some cases, they are more complex and more non-trivial than adding new code because you need to read someone's code. You need to budget couple of hours to read someone's code, understand what that person is trying to do, and then add value to that review, right? So contributors are encouraged to gradually participate in code reviews. And again, here, if you are struggling with, okay, what should I review? Start with my protocol or suggestion of, okay, pick focus areas. In those focus areas, sticking, stick to making code contributions, stick to uh, review contributions. So you are developing expertise in the code through your own contributions and also trying to learn the existing code and what is change, constantly changing by reviewing other people's code and their design, right? And spend considerable amount of time understanding the existing code. It is boring, right? It, it can seem like grunt work, but it is very valuable. It will help you add a lot of value to the project. And what is the goal in reviews is genuinely and objectively help the author improve the contribution and help them follow through. Don't just, just leave a bunch of comments and like, okay, I've done my bid and uh, I'm out, out of here. Follow through, right? Like uh, make sure that that person is able to resolve the comments or the difficulties that he or she is having in addressing their comments or uh, whatever disagreements you're having, they are followed through, they are resolved and you get to a point where the particular code can be merged or the design can be approved and things like that, right? Because in my honor, this is my unpopular opinion. I feel that if you are an if you are calling yourself as an active member of the project, right, or a contributor or committer or whatever the title, but you're not participating in reviews, then you are doing a disservice to the project. That's my uh, honest and unpopular opinion, and I would like to conclude by saying that, that uh, as you start your open source journey, initially it's fine to more attention to new contributions, coding only contributions, documentation only contributions, churn out, you know, churning out a lot of code, new design and all that. But gradually, you must start paying attention to reviewing other people's work. 
Okay, that's all I had. Questions? So uh, interesting presentation. Uh, thanks for taking the time today to provide it. Uh, I'm a little bit interested in, in any software project to begin to learn how we think about the code. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in other words, how do we begin to think like the designers? And I'm wondering if there's some insight that could be gained from kind of a design principle perspective as we begin to look at making contributions and learning more about Apache Pino. So I don't think like uh, we follow certain design principles or at least uh, like I don't think we have been staunch advocates of design patterns or things like that. I think what we just are advocates of is just first principles. At the end of the day, it's a. I think it's a, it's a system that is having a lot of problems and sub problems in the areas of core computer science. So get that right. Get the how you are going to make sure this is performant, scale, right, reliable, uh, correctness, uh, and uh, the right data structures and algorithms, which again goes back to the performance side of things how you're going to test it, right? And then obviously the 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 usual stuff of writing clean code and things like that. But as you're designing mm -hmm. about it, right, the only thing where I've seen people harp a lot on is uh, you may think of doing something now that is solving the problem, but is probably someone else thinks that it may not stand the test of time, right? So that's uh, the maintainability or extensibility angle of that. And then common discussions on that. This is not this is this is not the most performant way of doing this. I have a better way of doing this, right? And then there are other challenges that uh, that it's perfectly that it's not possible for uh, you or anyone to think because uh, you may have written something and I may come from LinkedIn because I may have seen that problem at LinkedIn scale, right? And then I may offer an opinion right or ask a question well what about that right how is this going mm -hmm. to work for our case as if in case i have a vested interest in what you're doing so i feel these are the certain things that i think everyone should try to get right performance reliability um right and how how this thing is the right thing to do for at least for the foreseeable future right and no uh, no we shouldn't see ourselves throwing away or rewriting this whole thing for something that we are already aware of. Like in the past, we have done something where we knew that this is going to conflict with a future feature. And then we ended up reverting the PR and deleting the thing. Did that answer your question? Well, I think it makes sense in general. Um, yeah. Uh, usually when I'm sitting down with any group of software engineers, uh, I'm mostly interested in, in you know, how are they thinking about some particular area of a system before I go and make changes? So that was really what I was uh, looking for. Is there insight into any of those areas in Pino? And it doesn't sound like there is. No. I, I guess that's just comes through the kind of open discussion. Yes, yes. Uh, what I may have missed saying that, I think it does require some some basic understanding of that area, right? Like what, how the current landscape of that in Pino, how does it currently function and things like that. But beyond that, I think uh, you can take it in how, whichever direction you like as, as long as it makes sense. Okay, fair enough, thanks. There's a question in the chat from uh, Robert. Robert, you want to, to ask or shall I read? Thank you, Jordan. Um, I'll read the question. I'm interested in expanding my contributions to the queryism, but I don't have your background, Sid, uh, in you know databases coming from Oracle and and other uh, places. Yeah. Do you have any re um, resources that you would recommend for like getting like a a more um, basic understanding of like the query engine that you know in Pino and and the area in general? Yes, absolutely. So I think so two things. I think I have uh, in my stash access to resources or blogs that can help 
build some foundational knowledge on query engine. I think I also did a 101 talk on query engine within LinkedIn uh, for the new hires. Uh, I remember sharing that with, with one of the PMCs in open source. Uh, but I think that is also something that I can share because there I talked a lot about like what does what does what does query mean? What does query compilation mean? What what does this operator mean? What does relational algebra mean and things like that? So I think that can also add value. Um, I don't think I can find all of that information at the top of my head, but outside this presentation, I can provide access. I'll work with Yard and what's the better way to, to provide all of that. So, so Yard and I think we need to find ways to sort of uh, like once we share this talk uh, recording, whatever, right? We should also find ways to like in this case, I need to provide some um, links to blogs and other material to Robert. Yes. So I'll work with you on how to do that. Okay. Okay. Sure. Good. Good idea. Thanks, Rob. Thank Can you. Can we communicate over LinkedIn or how? What is the best way to? Yeah, I think I've, you can message me on LinkedIn. You can also message me in the open source Slack channel. Uh, okay. I encourage all of you to join the open source uh, Slack channel for Apache Pino if you're, if you're not already. It's a pretty huge community and super responsive. I had a small question on the testing. Mm -hmm. We talked about reviews, but is there any testing and the responsibility of testing is with the developer here? It's like a unit testing? Yes. So, I, so yeah, I think the PRs, should have the required amount of unit tests. And I want to emphasize on unit tests and integration tests. Uh, because I think uh, we we tend to err on the side of creating an integration test that requires spinning up a cluster and a whole bunch of resources and does take time. Uh, so pay close attention to verifying all the everything via unit tests as much as possible. Then there are other things which currently are missing in the Apache Pino open source ecosystem, which is a good performance test suite, right? Where like a PR, when you author a PR, it goes through this unit testing framework as part of the build, but it also goes through a performance test suite or some kind of other kind of harness or regression test suite. That is missing. And currently that is uh, on the, the onus is on the individual deployments. Like for example, uh, when LinkedIn pulls in the jars from open source master, we run our own internal uh, tests and all that before we deploy it to prod. I'm sure starting or Uber must be doing the same thing. But that is, uh, I think it would be very valuable thing to have something uh, uh, that takes bits and pieces from each of these significant deployments and creates a generic testing framework in open source. But yeah, please, uh, in each of your contributions, make sure that it is fully well tested through unit tests or integration tests. All right. Um, with that said, um, thank you, Sid, really, really much. I learned a lot, so I think now I can guide better <laughs> um, people uh, where to start. And feel free to reach out to me with any question. I believe Sid will reply as well if you reach out to him. Yep. And yep. Thank you. Thank you for joining, and I wish you a great day or night or wherever you are. <laughs> All right. Thanks, folks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, Yarden, for organizing this. Year.